What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to discuss cues and when to use the cues, message cues to be specific. Like there are other type of cues, but I don't I'm not sure what are they. So I'm talking about RabbitMQ, ZeroMQ, Kafka. When do you want to use this in your architecture and do you really need it? Right? And that's the question here. You always have a question that, hey, do I really need to implement this in my system design or not? And I'm just trying to kind of assess that and help you with that if possible. So how about we jump into it? And if you're new here, guys, I discuss all sorts of backend engineering in this channel. So if you're interested, subscribe and like this video and share with your friends. That's it. Let's just jump into it. All right. So what is a queue and when do we need to use it? And uh, guys, if you if you already uh, subscribe to my channel, you would see me repeat this over and over again any technology out there any backend technology out there it exists for a reason and it exists to solve a problem so i know that might sound cliche and it makes just perfect sense right just yeah of course it exists for a reason and that also means that there's no technology just exists for fun of it or because it's cool right you need to use it if that problem exists for you you cannot just use gRPC because it's hip and cool, right? No, you should use it when you absolutely, the problems that gRPC addresses solves your problem, right? Addresses your problem. Same thing with a queue. So how about we talk about the actual problems with the queue solved? Back to the request response architecture. When I make a request to a backend and regardless of the communication protocol that i use whether it's tcp stateful tcp raw or whether i'm using grpc again stateful or whether i'm whether i'm using a stateless rest architecture that request requires some resources at the back end to be served right to be consumed and executed that request what does that mean? It means that request might be less to get all the employees, right? Or an update to do a booking system, right? It's like, hey, I'm going to book this seat. That's that's a that's the same thing, right? And this requires a finite amount of time of your server to actually process this. And we talked about the ways you can serve your request. And one way to solve this problem is asynchronous execution with a single thread, like your server has one thread, and that thread just keeps working the problems that it has, right? So serving request, this is now it's listening to TCP connection, this is now doing that, that's how Node.js does it, right? Other, other web servers... Uh, does it differently multi-threading multi-processing right regardless right so apache does it multi-threading node.js does a single thread but it's asynchronous and we talked about that i'm gonna reference the video here i think it's here <laughs> go check it out but sometimes a single thread in a node.js or multi-processing or multi-threading in a web server could not cut it because you will quickly overwhelm that single server to execute all these requests, right? And it, it really depends if that request is taking a long time to process. And if it does that, if that request is taking a huge amount of time, an unpredictable amount of time to process, then there are flood of other requests that is coming. I'm, I'm not talking about queues yet, guys, right? Just normal request response. There are a lot of requests coming and they are waiting. And when I say waiting, they, the client is actually just blocked because that access to the TCP connection didn't even get a response back. Okay. And that could be harmful for the user experience, right? The user will feel it. So, Ooh, what is going on? I click and nothing happened. And users hate that when they click and nothing happens you show me something that happens or tell me that something is happening but don't tell me that i'm doing something and i did something and i don't see any results they hate that you're a user you probably <laughs> seen that 
So how do we trick that? A, requ a normal request response architecture doesn't cut it in this case if your response time is unpredictable right because you have a lot of requests coming and you might say hey hussein i'm gonna scale horizontally and that's absolutely fine you can do that you can put a reverse proxy have it configured to be a load balancer and swizzle the request to all the other services and if you have, if you start waiting, if you've started seeing requests taking a long time to process, right, then you start spinning up more services or containers if you're in a microservices architecture and then start serving that. And people do this to this day without a queue, without an idea of a queue, right? And as I said, this doesn't really scale well if your processing at the backend is is very hungry, processing hungry, or CPU hungry, or even RAM hungry, right? because you're gonna spend a lot of time just uh, having this process take time. So if you're predicting that responses will always take a long time, probably spinning up multiple services will not help you, right? Because the request will be the same whether it's going uh it's sending to another server which are which is free or a service that is server doing other things as well yeah you're gonna st see some mindless mile cool ah, minus cool <laughs> is that the right word minus cool difference but still it's gonna take a long time so here's where a queue is useful if you're really think that request will always exponentially go large yeah maybe if your database is uh, doesn't have any rows but as you grow large that request will go slower and slower and slower with such exponentially not necessarily exponentially just uh, polynomially with your number of rows so here's where Q really beneficial so what you would do in this case is what is one gonna do I'm gonna employ a queue in my system a message queue and that means if i am receiving a request the server i will do a very quick operation that is constant that is a big o of one it's a very fast operation and i'm gonna respond to the user with a with some sort of an identifier right and here's that's that's how a queue works so if i send me a request i'm gonna put it in a queue that's a big off one because writing is always fast especially if you're in a lsm3 kind of a database right and most databases now especially write only just write to the end lsm right uh, log structure mercy you write it and then you respond back to the user hey i committed to you user that i have received your request and it's now processing or it's now it's in the queue it i can't promise anything else but hey i received it better than having a request that is not served right that is not just waiting so check user experience better right okay i'm willing to wait as a user yeah at least i see they received it and now really up to you as, as an architect you can have the client come back and ask and poll, P-O-L-L, this task ID that we're given. He say, hey, how's, how's this job down doing? How's this job doing? How's this, this job doing? And once that response actually complete, the response will come back. Say, hey, that job is done. Okay, you can now do whatever you want to do. That's one way of solving the problem. RabbitMQ doesn't do it this way. Uh, RabbitMQ does it the push way, right? Where it's just like a stateful connection. I forgot what the, the protocol that RabbitMQ uses, it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a very elegant way of using channels. It's awesome. I love it. And I'm going to make another video about this compared to HTTP2. The idea of RabbitMQ using channels, it's very similar to streams and i don't know who came up with this idea before regardless get back to the point if i respond back if that job is dequeued right or executed that could push 
results back to the client immediately as they are received, right? So this way, you eliminated the latency of waiting. Client is still technically didn't receive the result, right? Because you don't receive the result, but I can unblock the user experience. I can show some sort of a progress bar. I can, I can give a better user experience. And I elevated the flood of requests on my server. Now I'm going to have a nice queue. Yes, it's a centralized system still, but it's a nice queue and people, people, <laughs> services can listen to this queue and start pulling jobs, pulling tasks and execute and write it back to the queue, right? Very, very similar to a pub sub system, except the only difference between a queue and a pub sub a queue is whenever you remove an item from the queue, it is gone, right? That service owns it. It is dequeued. Versus the pub subsystem, you have a topic, or very similarly, right? The brokers have these topics, and the service can as infinitely consume the same item. Many services can consume the same item, right? But now each service have some sort of a position that remembers, oh, I consumed this. Yes, I consumed this. I consumed this. And the service optionally can have a way to go back and forth in the queue and then the pop up system. So that's a very quick, very quick way of knowing how do you actually, when do you want to use a queue versus uh, just a normal request uh, process system and load balancing and all that stuff, right? So very quick, if your request is indeterministic, you don't know how long it's going to take, a queue is probably a good idea for you. If your process is by nature long running, a queue is good for you, right? Just queue it and let other process pick up uh, the work and write it back to the queue. Or if it's a uh, resource hungry, if your by default, your process back in processing is a resource hungry, it's a bad idea to have the web server itself do the work for you. The web server should do one job and one job only. It shouldn't process your stinking request. It should just respond back to web traffic. It serves web. It is a web server. It serves web traffic and that's it. Don't let it process your prime numbers or do a very complex operations in the web server stuff. Try to separate concerns as much as possible. All right, guys, that's a quick video just to let you know the difference between when to use a queue, when to not use a queue. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe if you like this content. Like this video if you like it. I'm going to see you in the next one. You say, guys, stay awesome.